Okay, more from 6.4. Well, this is a number 9 and another differential equation with an initial condition y equals 0.25 when x equals 1. Uh, so again, we separate the variables. So I'll put with a dy uh, 1 over y squared. And then I can put the dx up in front. All right, and I got negative 2x dx. Now this is not 1, so I can use a power rule, and I can make it y to the negative 2 dy and negative 2 x dx. Then I can take the antiderivative of both sides, or integrate both sides, if you want to think of it like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the kind of the power rule. I'll add 1 divide by that, so this is going to be y to the, if I add 1, negative 1, divided by negative 1 is negative. And that equals, and this would be x squared over 2. Add 1 and divide by that, x squared over 2. But the 2 over 2 will cancel, so that's going to be negative x squared plus c. All right. And then I can multiply both sides by a negative 1. And this becomes y to the negative 1 equals x squared plus c. Again, this just became a new constant, a negative time. A con times a constant is also constant. Okay. And I can kind of rewrite this as 1 over y, so it makes a little more sense when I'm going to put some values in, equals x squared plus c. And then I'm going to find my value of c by using my initial conditions, or my given conditions, really, in this case. So 1 over 0.25 is the given condition. Okay, this is 1 over y, this is y, equals x squared, 1 squared, plus c. So when y is 0.25, x is 1, so it should satisfy this equation. 0.25 goes into 1 four times, so 1 squared is 1, so i got 4 equals 1 plus c, subtract 1 from both sides, 3 equals c. So I can put this back in my original equation. So instead of c, I've got 3. So 1 over y equals x squared plus 3. Then I can multiply both sides by y and divide by x squared plus c. So this is my 1 over x squared plus 3. Pardon me. x squared plus 3. So I can multiply by y and divide by x squared plus 3. So I've got 1 over x squared plus 3 equals y. Just flip them. y equals 1 over x squared plus 3. And again, there's no problems. Uh, this won't be, this, the denominator can't be 0 because x squared. The smallest x squared can be will be 0, and that's all right. So the domain will be all real numbers. Okay? So that's number 9. Okay, number 11. Another differential equation type problem. And number 11, we're told that... Um, Find the solution for the differential equation dy dt d equals k times y, where k is a constant that satisfies the given conditions. And you're told that k equals 1.5, and then y of 0 equals 100. That's really like saying y equals 100 when t equals 0, because we're in t. Okay? So again, we'll just uh, separate the variables here. So I've got dy, and this is going to be 1 over y. Okay? And that's going to be the natural log. We have to use the natural log for 1 over y. And then dt, k dt. And then we take the integral of both sides, or integrate both sides, or the antiderivative of both sides, whatever is your pleasure. And this is going to be 1 over u du, so that's going to be the natural log of the absolute value of y. And that equals, uh, well, the antiderivative of k will be kt plus c. We take the derivative of this, we'd get k. And then again, we'll change this to an exponential equation. All right. So what's my base? My base is E. What's my exponent? KT plus C. And what's my answer? Y. And since this is always positive, exponential is always positive, I, can, I don't need the absolute value. Then I can break this up from a sum to the product, E to the KT times E to the C. But E to the C, is, I can put that in front. And E to the C is just another constant, C. So there's my constant. So I have y equals c e to the kt 
when k is 1.5, so I just substituted it in here. And I'm going to evaluate this now with the 1.5t at y equals 100 uh, t when t equals 0, so I, I wrote it again. And um, this step really wasn't that necessary. I could have gone right down to here. y is 100, and that equals c times e to the 1.5, and t is 0. So I put these values in so I could find c. Well, 1.5 1, 1 times 0 is just 0, so I have e to the 0, which is just 1. So 100 equals c times 1, which is c, so c equals 100. So you can go back and put that in the, in the initial, or back up here in this equation here. y equals c times e to the kt. So y equals c was 100, and we were given that k was 1.5, so there's your final equation. y equals 100 e to the 1.5t. Okay, and that was number 11.